Welcome to the Did Emma Smith Attempt to Poison Joseph Smith video. Okay, it talks about poison in the Book of Mormon in Alma chapter 47. It says, Malachiah caused that one of his servants should administer poison by degrees to Lahontai that he died. And uh, Lahontai is pictured above. Okay, Dan Vogel had the following to say about Lahontai's death by poisoning. He says it calls to mind Alvin Smith, Joseph's surrogate father and his brother, uh, and Alvin died of poisoning also. Uh, it was by a doctor who administered too much calomel to him, which had a lot of mercury, and the Smith family thought that Alvin Smith may have been poisoned and uh, Dan Vogel's saying, well, maybe that's where Joseph Smith got the idea in the Book of Mormon to poison Lahontai. All right, and D. Michael Quinn uh, talks about another poisoning. Uh, William Smith and his daughter believe that Samuel Smith, that, and Samuel is Joseph's brother, they believe that he had been poisoned on orders of Brigham Young. Now, Samuel uh, Smith had a chance of replacing Hiram Smith as church patriarch, uh, which was a very high calling in the early days of the church, uh, higher than an apostle, higher than even the president of the Twelve. So Samuel had a chance of rep replacing Hiram as church patriarch and maybe eventually becoming the prophet. So uh, there were some rumors <clears throat> that uh, maybe Brigham Young had Samuel Smith poisoned and uh, Samuel is pictured above. Okay, another potential poisoning was William Law. Uh, he was in the first presidency with Joseph Smith. Uh, many years later, he disclosed that once Joseph Smith knew that Jackson and the Laws were disloyal, Joseph Smith tried everything in his power to kill them, or at least discredit them. That was William Law's opinion. Uh, in an interview published in the Salt Lake Tribune, William Law described various plots on his life that he barely escaped, including being poisoned at Hiram Smith's supposed reconciliation dinner. So William Law thought that uh, they were trying to poison him, Joseph Smith, and his cronies uh, because William Law had turned against Joseph Smith. Uh, William Law was against polygamy. Uh, of course, he started the Nauvoo Expositor, which led to the series of events uh, which got Joseph Smith killed. Anyway, an, another potential poisoning. Uh, what this is showing is that poisoning in these early days, uh, the 1800s, was uh, very common. And it was something that pe people worried about. Uh, getting poisoned by your enemies. Uh, yeah, something very common. So Joseph Smith was probably thinking about it because it was in his environment. Okay, another interesting uh, scripture, Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 84. And these signs shall follow them that believe. If any man shall administer poison unto them, it shall not hurt them. Those are the signs that follow those who believe. If you get poisoned, it will not hurt you. So... <laughs> According to that scripture, I guess Lahontai uh, was not a believer, didn't have faith. Uh, Alvin didn't have faith. Samuel Smith didn't have faith. William Law uh, got out of it uh, with his life without taking the poison. All right, so let's get into Emma Smith. Uh, the prophet Brigham Young did not like Emma. And he made quite a few comments uh, putting her down. Uh, talking against her. Uh, this is a statement from the prophet Brigham Young in 1866. He said, I never saw a day in the world that I would not almost worship that woman, Emma Smith, if she would be a saint instead of being a devil. So he would worship her, <laughs> be all for Emma, if she would be a saint instead of being a devil. But she's a devil. Uh, she has made her children inherit lies. To my certain knowledge, Emma Smith is one of the damnest liars I know of on this earth. 
Yet there is no good thing I would refuse to do for her if she would only be a righteous woman. Now, Brigham didn't like her because she stayed behind. She didn't follow Brigham. She started her own church with Joseph Smith III, the reorganized church. Uh, didn't believe in polygamy, didn't teach polygamy in their church, and uh, said that that was an invention by Brigham Young. So there was a feud. Okay, a statement in William Clayton's diary. He was described to Joseph Smith. Those full diaries have never been released. Uh, the parts that we do have, some bombshells were revealed, especially about polygamy. We're still waiting for those diaries to be released. We don't know if they ever will. There could be some of the most uh, sensitive and controversial information in those diaries uh, to come out. So we hope that they'll release them someday, but we don't know. Maybe somebody can get in and steal them <laughs> like Fred Collier used to do. Anyway, William Clayton's diary, 1843 entry says in the morning I William Clayton wrote as a scribe a revelation for Joseph Smith consisting of 10 pages on the order of the priesthood showing the designs in Moses Abraham David and Solomon having many wives and concubines etc after it was wrote or written presidents Joseph and Hiram Smith presented it and read it to Emma who said she did not believe a word of it and appeared very rebellious. So, uh, was Emma on to Joseph Smith that he was making these revelations up? Uh, did she just not believe in polygamy? But she did not believe a word of it and appeared very rebellious, and uh, Emma was not a big fan of polygamy. Okay, the diary of Charles Lowell Walker, uh, 1876 entry, so this would be uh, uh, out in Utah. Uh, Walker said that he, Joseph Smith, gave her Emma the revelation uh, that was on polygamy, and no, uh, no sooner had she obtained it than she threw it in the fire and burned it, thereby thinking to destroy celestial marriage from the face of the earth but was foiled and from that time on she has fought against the church of god so he's probably listening to brigham young sermons the prophet so yeah uh emma uh didn't like the the revelation on polygamy threw it into the fire and burned it and emma was so against polygamy that she actually threatened to divorce joseph smith that's not something you're gonna see <laughs> in a uh, Mormon church movie about Joseph Smith and Emma. Nothing in there that uh, Emma was thinking about getting a divorce. And this uh, information comes from uh, Newell and Avery's book, Mormon Enigma, Emma Hale Smith, the second edition. I think the original version came out in 1984. Uh, of course, Emma is pictured above here. Uh, no matter what its origin, that is polygamy, she, Emma, opposed the doctrine. She was not without power in the struggle uh, with Joseph over it. Uh, four days after her return from St. Louis, Emma exerted her strongest leverage. She threatened divorce. All right, back to William Clayton's diary. We do have some excerpts. Uh, that have appeared over the years in different uh, publications. Anyway, this is 1843, William Clayton. Uh, he says, This morning, Joseph told me that since Emma came back from St. Louis, she had resisted the principle of plural marriage in toto. And he had to tell her that he would relinquish all for her sake. He would, re he would relinquish all for her sake. Uh, I guess give up all of, the, all of his wives. Uh, she said that she would give him Eliza and Emily Partridge, but he knew that if he took them, she would pitch on him and obtain a divorce and leave him. He, however, told me that he should not relinquish anything. So basically, Joseph Smith was lying to Emma. He's not going to give up any of his wives. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> And then he also thinks that if he takes Eliza and Emily Partridge, that uh, Emma Smith may divorce him. 
Okay, an account here by the church historian Andrew Jensen in the historical record uh, manuscript or uh, book. It says, uh, I, Emily Partridge, was married to Joseph Smith on the 4th of March, 1843. My sister, Eliza Partridge, was also married to Joseph a few days later. This was done without the knowledge of Emma Smith. And, of course, Emily and Eliza are pictured above. So, all this tension is building up. Emma did not like polygamy. She burned the revelation. She's getting pissed off at Joseph. Joseph is getting married behind her back to different, different women. Emma's getting more and more angry. Okay, uh, Andrew Jensen's uh, account uh, continues. On the 11th of May, 1843, we, the Partridge sisters, were sealed to Joseph Smith a second time in Emma's presence. But from that very hour, however, Emma was our bitter enemy. Things went from bad to worse until we were obligated to leave the house and find another home. So Emma threw them out. He's, uh, she's getting pissed off. The picture above is Emma, Joseph, and Fanny Alger in the barn. But uh, you can see Emma getting mad. She's getting mad at these other uh, plural marriages. And she probably doesn't even know half of the marriages that Joseph Smith is getting involved in. All right, some more information in the Mormon Enigma book. Also from uh, James B. Allen in an article... Uh, that he wrote in the Journal of Mormon History in 1979. Uh, it says, Five days later, Emma found two letters in Joseph Smith's pocket from Eliza Snow. Emma confronted William Clayton with them and asked if he had delivered them to Joseph. Clayton denied being the courier. He said that Emma seemed vexed and angry he also recorded that Joseph told him that Emma had said some harsh words. All right, some more information in the Mormon Enigma book. Emma went for a short carriage ride with her husband on August 22nd. She called on the Lucian Woodworth family while Joseph attended to some business at the temple. Okay, the story continues. Uh, Emma apparently did not know that the Woodworth's 16-year-old daughter, Flora, had been Joseph Smith's plural wife since the spring. What probably began as a casual social visit resulted in a confrontation between Emma and Flora when Emma discovered that Joseph Smith had given Flora a gold watch. Emma would have recognized the implications of such a gift since Joseph Smith had also given one to Eliza Snow, another plural wife, and she, Snow is pictured above. Uh, Joseph returned just as Emma was demanding the gold watch from Flora, uh, and Joseph Smith reprimanded her, reprimanded uh, Emma, I guess. Okay, from the book, uh, Mormon Enigma, uh, continuing, and uh, from the diary of William Clayton. Once in the carriage, however, Emma vented her own frustrations. Joseph told Clayton that she continued her abuse, quote-unquote, after they arrived home, and finally, and finally, Joseph Smith had to employ harsh measures to stop her. So... Emma's kind of screaming and yelling at Joseph all the way home in the carriage. Joseph has had enough and finally had to employ harsh measures to stop her. Well, did Joseph Smith hit her? Did he beat her? What would be considered a harsh measure, you know, back in the 1800s? Another statement by William Law here in the Salt Lake Tribune, 1886. Uh, Emma used to complain, especially because of the girls whom Joseph kept in the house, devoting his attention to them, sleeping with them. Uh, William Law reported that Emma once said, the revelation says that I must submit 
uh, to polygamy or be destroyed? Well, I guess I have to submit. So what did that mean that uh, in the Revelation, Joseph Smith said that if Emma did not accept his wives, and, and we'll read the Revelation, and did not accept polygamy, she would be destroyed. Well, I guess I better submit because I don't want to be destroyed. In other words, uh, Joseph Smith uh, might have threatened to kill her. All right, so here is the revelation in the uh, famous Doctrine and Covenants, section 132, the revelation on polygamy. Got a picture here of Emma Smith above, uh, looking a little bit older, uh, getting tired from a long, hard life. Anyway, let's read this revelation. Uh, this is supposedly from the Lord uh, to Emma. And let mine handmaid Emma Smith receive all those wives that have been given unto my servant Joseph. Accept all my wives. <laughs> and I command mine handmaid Emma Smith to abide and cleave unto my servant Joseph and to none else. Emma Smith was not allowed to have other husbands. Joseph Smith was allowed by the Lord, apparently, to have as many wives as he wanted. Emma was asking uh, to marry William Law. She's like, well, if, if you've got these Partridge sisters, Eliza Snow, Fanny Auger, all these others, why can't I have one? I want William Law. Well, Joseph Smith told her, you are to cleave unto me and none else. You are not allowed to have anybody but me. Uh, but if she will not abide this commandment, she shall be destroyed, saith the Lord. Right there in the scriptures, still in there today, hasn't been taken out. DNC 132, Emma being threatened with destruction. For I am the Lord thy God and will destroy her if she abide not in my law. So it's pretty serious. Um, you know, Joseph Smith is basically threatening to kill her. So it wouldn't be too... Uh, far it wouldn't be too uh, unlikely that emma may want to get back at him and kill him okay a fascinating entry here in uh, william clayton's diary 1843 uh this morning president joseph took me and conversed considerable concerning some delicate matters uh, she, he said that Emma wanted to lay a snare for me. I guess he's talking about laying a snare for William Clayton. Uh, Joseph told me last night of this and said that he had felt troubled. He said that Emma had treated him coldly and badly since I came, and he knew that she was disposed to be revenged on him. Interesting. Joseph Smith knew that Emma was disposed to be revenged on him, to revenge William Clayton and uh, Joseph Smith, it sounds like, to be revenged for some things that she thought that if he would indulge himself, basically taking a bunch of wives, she would too. So, yeah, so here we get that information of why he said, you know, no, 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 you're supposed to cleave unto me and none else. Because, hey, if you're going to in indulge in taking more than one wife, I'm going to take more than one husband, and I want William Law. All right, so back to the Mormon Enigma book. Uh, let's get to the poisoning. On Sunday, November 5th, 1843, Joseph became suddenly sick at dinner and vomited so hard that he dislocated his jaw and raised fresh blood. His self-diagnosis was that he had every symptom of poisoning. And Joseph Smith had been poisoned before, I think at least on two other accounts. So, you know, he may have been uh, familiar, or he was familiar, with the symptoms of poisoning. And here is exactly what it says in uh, the Joseph Smith Diary, November 5th, 1843. You can find this in the Joseph Smith papers uh, online. Uh, Joseph says, uh, I was taken suddenly sick at the dinner table, went to the door and vomited all my dinner. 
jaws dislocated, and raised fresh blood. Every symptom of poison. So here we have Joseph Smith thinking that uh, he was poisoned. He's sitting down to the dinner table with his family. Uh, Emma Smith is probably the one who made the meal. So, uh, and you know, there's a lot of tension in their relationship. So what is Joseph Smith going to think? Okay, so uh, reading out of the diary again on November 5th. Uh, it says, we, we had a prayer meeting or circle in the evening at the hall over the store. I imagine they're talking about the red brick store, the second level, uh, where they were doing an early version of the Mormon temple endowment ceremony, and part of that uh, was a prayer circle. Uh, but then it says, Joseph did not dress, nor Emma. So they basically had their temple clothing, uh, but Joseph and Emma did not get dressed in their temple clothing and did not participate in the prayer circle. So something major must have happened. And here is a picture of what they wear in the temple in the modern day, all white with a green apron. Uh, they're sliding their thumb across their throat. Uh, that was a penalty gesture uh, uh, showing ways that life can be taken that was taken out in 1990. All right, so from the Mormon Enigma book, uh, they talk about this. Evidence suggests that Joseph indeed accused Emma of poisoning his coffee. His diary records that he and Emma did not participate in the prayer circle at that meeting. This is particularly significant because members were asked not to join the prayer circle if they had feelings of antagonism toward anybody else in the group. Only unusual circumstances would have restrained them. Apparently, Joseph believed at the time that Emma had poisoned him. So, Joseph believed it. Was it true? Well, you know, we're going to try to figure that out in the rest of this video, but we don't know for sure. Okay, the next day, uh, November 6th, uh, Joseph Smith records the following in his diary. Uh, busy with domestic concerns. So, probably talking to Emma Smith about what happened. Uh, the idea that he thinks maybe she tried to poison him. And then she's going to say, well, you threatened to destroy me in the Doctrine and Covenants. Unless I do exactly what you say. So, they're going to have this nice long argument on November 6th. Uh, it's probably what he's talking about with busy with domestic concerns. All right, so about 11 years later, the prophet Brigham Young talks about this poisoning of Joseph Smith uh, several times. This one comes out of the Leonard J. Arrington papers. Uh, it is not well known at all. In fact, I don't think uh, this is anywhere else on the internet. Uh, it says, Emma tried to poison her husband and was connived with the mob that did kill him. This according to the prophet Brigham Young in a council meeting. Emma tried to poison her husband and was connived with the mob that did kill him. So Brigham Young, or Brigham Young thinks... <laughs> that uh, Emma Smith had something to do with the mob at Carthage Jail that killed Joseph. All right, a few years later, the prophet Brigham Young makes another comment about the poisoning. This comes from the Brigham Young Office Journals, USU. I guess that's Utah State University, 1859. I don't think this is on the internet either. In course of conversation, President Brigham Young alluded to the character of Emma Smith. He observed that Emma had tried to poison Joseph Smith at the table and had sought to injure him in other ways. All right, then a few years uh, after that, Brigham Young made a longer statement, uh, actually, actually in General Conference in 1863, uh, can be found in the Leonard J. Arrington papers. 
Uh, also in the manuscript addresses of Brigham Young. And I broke this one up on several slides because it's, it's fairly long. Uh, Brigham Young says, remember this is in general conference. <laughs> He's telling the church, hey, by the way, in general conference, Emma tried to kill Joseph Smith. She tried to poison him, by the way. Imagine them saying something like that in general conference today. Uh, anyway, Emma tried to destroy the whole church, and I know it. Joseph himself testified before high heaven more than once that she had administered poison to him. Okay, so the prophet Brigham Young continues. There are men and women present today who can bear witness that more hell was never wrapped up in any human being than there is in her Emma. <laughs> Emma has more hell wrapped up in her than any other human being that has ever lived. Brigham Young really, really likes to exaggerate. Emma was more evil than Hitler and Stalin. Yep. Uh, you heard it first from the prophet Brigham Young in general conference. She, Emma, gave him, Joseph Smith, too heavy a dose of poison and he vomited it up and was saved by faith. All right. The prophet Brigham Young described a secret council at which he said that Joseph accused Emma of the poisoning and called upon her to deny it. If she could, he told her that she was a child of hell and literally the most wicked woman on this earth, that there was not one more wicked than she. So, <laughs> child of hell, that's Emma. Uh, I found a picture of a child of hell. And Brigham continues, Joseph told her where she, Emma, got the poison and how she put it in a cup of coffee and said, Joseph, you got that poison so-and-so, and I drank it, but you could not kill me. And I got a funny uh, picture here of an empty cup of coffee. You get to the bottom that says, oops, you've been poisoned. Okay, Brigham continues. When it entered his stomach, he went to the door and threw it off. He spoke to her in that council in a very severe manner, and she never said one word in reply. So if she doesn't say anything, then she's probably guilty, right? That's what Brigham Young is thinking. He has all the facts right, which is interesting. This being, you know, 10, 15, and 20 years later. Uh, he's got the facts right, you know, from, from what Joseph put into his diary. Uh, he spoke to her in that council in a very severe manner. It's probably up on the second floor of that red brick store, uh, I guess, in a council, you know, before or after that prayer circle. I'm guessing that's where that occurred. I have witnesses all around who can testify that I am now telling the truth. Twice she undertook to kill him. Emma Smith tried to kill Joseph Smith twice, according to Brigham Young. So that's some good dialogue, right, that they can put into Emma Smith, my story movie. <laughs> oh, Joseph, I love you so much, but I'm going to have to kill you. Okay, the plural wife of Joseph Smith, Desdemona Wadsworth Fulmer, pictured above. In her autobiography, uh, she mentions a dream. She says, in the rise of polygamy, I was warned in a dream that Emma Smith was going to poison me. I told my dream to Brother Joseph Smith, and he told me that it was true. She would do it if she could. <laughs> Why would Joseph Smith say this to Desdemona? Because maybe he had experience with it before. Desdemona goes to Joseph Smith and says, hey, I had this dream. I think Emma Smith might want to poison me. You know, I am your plural wife, and she gets very jealous. Joseph Smith says, uh, yeah, she would do it if she could. Okay, I wrote Lucius Hale in his journal in the 1850s. 
in Utah, probably listening to Brigham Young and his speeches, uh, uh, wrote, not sure how you say that, he says, a great many of the saints in these days think that the prophet Joseph Smith's wife, Emma Hale Smith, was a bad woman, that she tried to poison the prophet. All right, uh, another account in the diary of Charles Lowell Walker, 1876. It says, uh, Solon Foster also related that when Emma, Joseph Smith's first wife, heard of the revelation on polygamy, she sought the life of Joseph and tried to poison him. Uh, but he was delivered by the power of God. And uh, Charles Walker is pictured above. All right, I'm not going to go too much into the apologetic uh, position. I'm just presenting the evidence. You can decide for yourself. But I did find this a uh, really lame apologetic statement <laughs> uh, by this lady, uh, this Mormon lady, Heather Farrell, on her blog in 2011. I guess she's a Mormon author. Uh, her website is womeninthescriptures.com. Uh, one of her books is Walking with Women of the Book of Mormon. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how many women are mentioned in the Book of Mormon by name? And I did a video about this. Three. <laughs> That's going to be a pretty short book. Uh, anyway, uh, Heather Farrell says, Emma never poisoned Joseph because she was jealous of his other wives, as some people accuse her of doing. It was bad chicken. <laughs> Show me the account that says it was bad chicken. There is absolutely nothing that says that. She's just pulling this stuff out of thin air. And then she says, all the quotes that you normally read about Brigham Young accusing her are actually misquoted. <laughs> well, I've uh, put up some new quotes by Brigham Young. We got like two or three or four different accounts from Brigham Young, but all those were actually misquoted, right? In general conference, in his office uh, papers. Really lame apologetics. Uh, she sh Heather, Heather should stay out of that business. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. What do you think? Do you think there's enough evidence? to support the idea that Emma tried to poison Joseph Smith. Uh, I guess we'll never know for sure unless you were sitting at that table and you saw Emma put something into Joseph Smith's coffee. Uh, Brigham Young seemed to think uh, pretty definitely that it did occur. Joseph Smith thought that it did occur. Uh, of course, Mormon apologists uh, don't think that it happened. People like uh, Richard Bushman said, ah, no, that's, that didn't happen because Joseph Smith got sick on other occasions. I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't put it past Emma. She, she had a hard life. Uh, Joseph Smith took harsh measures with her, maybe beat her, uh, threatened to destroy her in Revelation. So maybe Emma wanted to get back at him. We're taking all those wives, very jealous. Uh, maybe keep the community property that was in, in their names. Not sure. Uh, but that's going to do it for this video. And I thank you for watching the Did Emma Smith Attempt to Poison Joseph Smith video.